This is OP-1. It is my first attempt at making an air engine. And it was rubbish. Super complicated and it broke down after only about 15 runs. So, a couple of weeks ago, having contracted the dreaded COVID-19 and getting locked down, I figured I would revisit air engines. This is what I came up with. BMV-1, the working prototype. It's using a camless diaphragm design popularized by Tom Stanton, and while its size might give you an idea of a gentle engine, it is anything but. The engine's veritable noise is only matched by its literal order of magnitude increase in efficiency as opposed to the OP-1. The big change from the OP-1 is the use of a cylinder diaphragm to prevent any air leaking out before the power stroke is finished. However, instead of a rubber sheet, the diaphragm material was chosen to be a party balloon. This allows the engine to work at pressures as low as 1 to 2 psi. But it also means that the engine can easily eat itself. Indeed, the party balloon diaphragm can tolerate only up to around 10 psi of pressure before mildly malfunctioning. So, the air inflow to the engine has to be regulated. One has to ask though, if the MV-1 was only the prototype, then what was it a prototype of? The BMV-2. V-2? A formidable looking mean-sounding beast of an engine. Too dramatic? Anyways, so what is this engine then? Well, it's a V2-type engine with the cylinders at the 90-degree offset. It uses pressurized air as its energy source, obviously. But unlike most other air pressure piston engines on YouTube, it works on such low pressures that it technically runs off one's breath. The five-stage working principle for each of the cylinders is largely the same as Tom Stanton's diaphragm engine. Firstly, as the piston moves up, the opening to the cylinder gets sealed by this somewhat phallic-looking piston extension made from a rivet. Shortly after, this ball valve is opened, which lets the reservoir pressurize. As the piston starts moving down again, the ball valve closes again, trapping the pressurized air in the reservoir. Then, as the cylinder seal is broken, the air from the reservoir will inflate the diaphragm, which pushes on the piston, which in turn rotates the crankshaft. Eventually, though, the membrane can no longer touch the piston, at which point all of the pressurized air in the cylinder and the reservoir is allowed to vent out, clearing the system for the next cycle. Now, let's talk power. The engine was tested on the usual prony brake based power meter. Using an airbrush compressor, each test was performed with 3 liters of about 60 psi air. Averaging out multiple tests tells us that the engine is capable of producing around 0.6 watts of mechanical power. That's not a massive amount of power, probably attributed to the small piston size. However, we also need to look at the efficiency. Unfortunately, since the OP-1 is non-functional, I was not able to properly quantify this efficiency increase. 
However, simply looking at the runtime, we can already see that the MV2 is much more efficient at using the available air. The maximum RPM of the engine is around 1800, with potential peaks of 2000 RPM. The idle speed is strongly dependent on the flywheel characteristics. However, with the flywheel fitted here, the idle RPM turned out to be around 715 and the idle runtime was around a minute and a half. I also wanted to perform an impulse test to compare it to Tom Stanton's original diaphragm engine, as it is what inspired me in the first place. So, I set up a thrust stand and fitted a 13 by 6.5 propeller that I found and slightly modified from Thinkiverse. Now, I don't quite understand whether I set something up wrong or did some calculation incorrectly, but I have a hard time believing that the MV2 is essentially eight times less efficient than Tom's design. Sure, I have two cylinders instead of one, and my propeller is 3D printed so it's less efficient, but that's a bit extreme. Well, regardless, another front project is done. Next time, though, I'd really like to actually power something with one of these engines. A car? Perhaps a plane? How about a train? So, let me know down in the comments, what do you think I should power with these engines in the future? I hope you all have a great day, and I will see you next time.